Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. Um, if you enjoy this video, drop a like, subscribe, love to see you next time. So today what we're going to talk about is how to actually go about calculating the value of a publicly traded company. So how do we calculate the value we should be paying for the shares? Um, what are they worth? When should we be buying? When should we be selling? Um, all of that is informed by us knowing the underlying value of those shares. So how do you actually go about calculating that is what we're going to look at today. So um, the first bit of information you're going to need is something called EPS TTM, which stands for, if I just write that up, EPS, often you'll see in brackets, TTM. What that means is earnings per share trailing 12 months. So um, over the previous four quarters, how much per share has that company earned? And for today's example, let's just assume that that's $1. $1 per share, that's how much was earned over the previous four quarters. Um, and that's going, going to inform some of, the, some of our basically valuation calculations. So um, the first thing we're gonna look at is how much the company earns per share, and then we need to look at how quickly the company is growing. So essentially this analysis is going to look at trying to calculate what the value of the shares are going to be in the future and then working backwards to figure out what we should be paying today if we want to make a certain return. So I'm going to assume that uh, the company is earning $1 and I'm also going to assume that this company is growing at 15% per year. Now, the figures that we use in terms of growth rates and, and the PE multiple, which we'll get to in a sec, these do have a very big impact on the outcome of these calculations. So before you go ahead, before you go ahead and run a sort of a valuation of a company, it's really important that you understand the fundamentals of the business, you understand how that company works, and you're not just looking out kind of the rear vision mirror at what the company did in terms of growth in the past. So if we look at um, Apple, for example, that company has grown at ridiculous rates for the past um, sort of 20 years. It's unlikely to do the same growth rate for the next 20 years. So it's not going to go from a billion dollar company to a trillion dollar company and then, um, you know, go times a thousand again. Uh, that's that's just unrealistic. So for you to do these valuations well, you really have to have a good understanding of what the company's growth is likely to look like in the future. Um, and we may do some more videos on that so you can get a good idea of how to figure that stuff out. Um, but just thought I'd mention that it's very important um, to know kind of how quickly the, the company is going to grow into the future and not just look at what it's done in the past. All right, so we're assuming the company's going to grow at 15% a year, and for this particular valuation, I'm actually going to um, look over the next 10-year period. So I'm going to assume the company is growing at 15, growing at 15% for the next um, for the next 10 years. So I need to figure out what one dollar of earnings turns into in 10 years' time. So if we grow that $1 at 15% a year for 10 years, what are we going to end up with at, at the end of that time? So um, to do this, you can do this on the spreadsheet, on a calculator, um, whatever's easiest for you. Personally, I'm going to use the rule of 72. <laughs> if you've watched one of my videos before, you've probably seen that. I use it just about every video. So um, I'm going to use the rule of 72. So 72 divided by 15. Okay, sorry about that. My whiteboard literally just fell off the wall, but it's back now. So I'm going to use the rule of 72. I've gone 72 divided by 15, so the company's growing at 15% a year. That means that the earnings are going to double approximately every five years. I think my maths is right on that one. Uh, yep, the, the, company's, the company's earnings are going to double approximately every five years. So if I'm looking at earnings over a 10 year period, that means I have two doubles, two lots of five years going to 10. So that earnings is going to double approximately twice. So in 10 years time, the earnings are going to be, sorry, in five years time, the earnings are going from $1 to $2. And in another five years time, they're going to go from $2 to $4. So now I have a company that in 10 years time is going to be earning around $4 per share. So let's get into the next step of figuring out what that share price is actually likely to be if it's earning $4 and, and figuring out um, you know, what's the next step in this calculation. 
All right, so I've got earnings going from $1 to $4 over 10 years, growing at 15% a year. I now need to figure out what's gonna be the value of those shares in 10 years if the company is now earning $4. That's the next step in this valuation. So um, what we need to do is multiply this $4 by something called a P-E ratio. Um, P-E or price to earnings ratio, very common um, sort of um, valuation metric that's used out there. Um, essentially, we're gonna multiply the earnings of the company by a certain amount, and that's gonna give us an approximate price. So. Um, over the last century, the approximate, the sort of average PE ratio of a company in the S&P 500 in the United States has been around 15. So that's been the average PE ratio for a publicly traded company. But these PE ratios vary widely. So if the company is growing very, very fast, the PE ratio will tend to go up. If the company is growing very, very slowly, or it's actually declining, or it's in some sort of um, cyclical, harder to determine type industry like the automotive industry, you'll actually see that PE ratio go a lot lower. So we're going to assume our business is quite consistent, and the but we've actually got 15% growth, which is well above um, sort of the average. The average for the S&P 500 is usually around 7% growth in earnings, something like that. So um, we're actually going about twice as fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double this average PE. Um, doubling the growth rate is another common way of determining approximately what the PE ratio for a company should be. So I'm gonna multiply four by, in this case, 30, a 30 PE. And that's going to give me a value per share, $4 times $30 of $120 per share. That's going to be the approximate value of shares of this particular company in 10 years time. So um, the P ratio again is another one of those ones that has a big impact on this calculation. So I definitely do some research on what your particular company that you're looking at has traded on, you know, what's the average P of that company. In the past, websites like MSN Money are always good for that, um, and often you can track down um, the PE ratio history of other companies um, quite quickly just online as well. So that's one to watch out for. All right, so I've got $120 per share in 10 years' time. Now we need to figure out what sort of return we want to make and what we should be paying for that business today. We've figured out what it's going to be worth down the track. We need to now figure out what it's going to be worth sort of right this second. So that's the next step. Okay, so hopefully by now you're feeling pretty comfortable with how we got to this $120 figure. Um, the growth rate that you use and the PE multiple that you use is gonna have a big influence on that figure. So definitely, definitely do, uh, I can't stress this enough, do your research before you really dive into this calculation seriously. But let's assume you are comfortable with $120 uh, per share, that's what, the value of this company is going to be, or the value of a single share of this company is going to be about 10 years down the track. So what we need to do next is actually figure out what to pay for this business today. So um, the first thing we need to do that is to figure out how much of a return we actually want to make on this investment. And I've just jotted down 15% there. So this is always the target return that I use when I look at investments. Um, the S&P 500, which I've mentioned several times now, has returned about 8% per year on average. If I only want to target an 8% per year, I'd just stick my money straight in an index fund. I wouldn't be bothering to even look at individual companies and do these sorts of valuations. So since I am wanting to do this and am wanting to, I am wanting to sort of pick individual companies and outperform the market, I'm going to use a higher um, sort of target than 8%, quite, quite a lot higher in this case. So um, it's high enough that it is well above what the index has typically done, but it's low enough that it's not going to price me out of everything. Um, as you'll see in a sec, the higher the discount rate, as this is usually called in business school, or what Phil Town would call the minimum acceptable rate of return, um, the higher this figure is, the less you're going to be able to pay for a company. So essentially this, um, as you'll see in a sec, we're going to discount that $120 back for 10 years. Um, but the higher target return you use, the less you're going to be able to pay for companies. So if I was using a 30% target return per year, it's going to price me out of pretty much everything. Um, that is 
Um, a phenomenal return. There's very few people in the world who've done that sort of return over any sustainable kind of long period of time. So 15%, it's high enough that it's it, it's above the market average, but it's low enough that it's not gonna price me out of everything, and I'm still gonna be able to find investments. So what do I actually do with this 15%? Um, now, if I'm looking to hold this $120 company for 10 years, I'm gonna need to work backwards 15% compounding every year to figure out what this $120 and 10 year company is actually worth today. So essentially I'm gonna divide by 1.15 and I'm gonna do that 10 times. So divided by 1.15, divided by 1.15, excuse me, 1.15. Um, and I'm just gonna keep doing that until I have done that 10 times. Um, a quick way of doing this, again, is using the rule of 72. So 72 divided by 15% is about five. So this company's going to double approximately every five years. Um, I'm sorry if I'm racing here or if I'm losing anyone. Um, again, drop a comment, uh, drop a question in the comments if I am uh, losing anyone here. But um, essentially this share price is gonna double um, every, every five years if I wanna make a 15% return. So. Um, if I work backwards, uh, five years in, this should be at about $60, and on day one, this should be worth about $30. So essentially, if you want a 15% return, just divide the thing by four. <laughs> and that's a quick shortcut. If you're using a rule of 72, and if you always target a 15% return, then once you figure out that that's kind of end share price, you can simply just divide it by four, and that gives you the current value of those shares today. So uh, let's get into the final step and please keep watching because this is a very, very important one. Um, we've figured out what the estimated value of that sh those shares are today at $30, but I stress uh, you're gonna wanna watch this next section before you actually go out and kind of buy anything. All right, so the final step, we've figured out that this company we think is worth about $30 today. So in business school, this would be called the intrinsic value intrinsic value so that's what they'd call this in business school intrinsic value what's the company worth to you today if you want to make a certain rate of return over the next period of time so um, intrinsic value Phil Town if you don't know who Phil Town is go check his stuff out I'm sure if you're watching my channel you probably know who Phil Town is but if you don't go check him out um, what Phil Town actually calls this value is the sticker price sticker price. So the reason he calls it sticker price is sort of a mental reminder to himself and to his students that we don't ever pay sticker. If you're going to buy a brand new car, you don't want to pay the price that's on the window. We do not want to pay sticker price in investing. So what we need to actually implement is something called a margin of safety. So margin of safety is something I've made a video about before on the channel, so go check that out if you haven't already. But essentially, a margin of safety is kind of giving us uh, some room to work with to give us some protection in our investments. So if we think this thing's worth $30, we don't want to pay $30 for it. We don't want to pay sticker. We don't want to pay intrinsic value. We want a price that is lower than $30 that offers a big, big margin of safety. You know, this company we think is going to grow at 15%. What if it only grows at 10? You know, that is going to affect the value of those future shares massively. And if it's at, uh, if it only grows at 10%, it's probably going to be trading at a lot lower than a 30 PE as well. So, you know, there's, there's room for error here in our valuation and there's room for error with what the company's actually going to do in the future as well. So um, I'm going to use a margin of safety and what I typically use is a pretty aggressive one, 50%. So 50% margin of safety sounds like a lot. It is a lot. Um, there's not a lot of companies that often come up with a 50% margin of safety. Usually we're buying into companies during some sort of event. So um, there's a recession or there's a lot of fear around a particular industry for whatever reason. That's often when we're buying into companies um, because we're using such a big, big margin of safety, but the advantage to doing this and waiting and waiting and waiting patiently until these companies come on sale 
is it allows us to get much, much larger returns. You know, if you look back at stock charts and look and say, oh, well, if I only bought at the bottom of 2008 before the, the 10 year bull market up to 2018, I would have made so much money. So, um, it's it's the whole you know buy low sell high which you've heard a million times but this is actually a way to figure out how to do it um that's not to say that i can pick the bottom or pick the top or anything it's it's if i know that it is you know something may continue to keep falling if it's giving me a margin of safety of 50 percent but i got in at such a good price that it's bound to correct over time and i'm bound to do well so 50% margin of safety, that gives me a fair or a sort of buy price for this particular company of $15 per share. So um, that's sort of how I work through valuations. I've actually set this out on, on, a, on a spreadsheet so that you can, you know, plug and play with different numbers quite quickly and you don't have to work through this. And you hit it on a whiteboard, but it's just to demonstrate that these calculations are relatively simple um, so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you got a lot out of it and I hope you're able to follow through uh, when you get into that $15 valuation so hope you enjoyed the video if you did drop a like give me a comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time cheers